The next part of the training is looking at analyzing our compos composite structure and post-processing it for specific results that are as very specific to composite analysis. So at this point, we've got our geometry cleanup sorted, we have our, our composite definition established and we're passing it through into an FEA analysis where we'll apply load, loading and boundary conditions and then we want to visualize the results. Before I get there, we need to talk about what type of analysis we're going to do on our, on our composite structure, whether we're using shell elements or solid elements. So composites are generally fairly thin compared to their other dimensions, which makes them suitable for shell modeling. But there are certain circumstances where we need to look at modeling it with a solid element because of the type of loading that we're, we're applying or the structure itself. In, the, in this case of that rear diffuser, of a, of a rear diffuser, we have thicknesses that are up to 31 millimeters because of a sandwich composite, which means that compared to its other dimensions, it is reasonably thick. And in this case, using shell elements might not be the most accurate or representative way of analyzing this structure. So what we can do in this circumstance is use the convert to solids tool in ACP and generate a solid model out of our shell, our shell model and layup definition. So this is the, the the thickness distribution in our solid model represented by the, the color contour on our shell. Another area, uh, another application where this solid modeling approach is critical would be when the through thickness response of your structure is critical. This is uh, applications where delamination is occurring, like in an impact situation. You can see that using uh, solid elements for all of the individual plies through the thickness, we can actually ca capture the ply separation. This isn't going to be possible if we're using a single shell element. So to create our solid model, uh, down the bottom of our, our model tree we have solid models. So we're going to create a solid model out of our shells. We need to specify that we're going to generate all of our elements into solid models, uh, solid elements and the extrusion method that we're going to use. So the way that it generates the solids is that it takes our shell, we, we understand which way our thickness direction was pointing, and then it, it extrudes each ply into a solid element. We can then specify to simplify that in we can then simplify that in a couple of different ways. If we use a analysis ply wise, we are we are going to model every single individual ply, but we can select options for extrusion such as monolithic, where we would use a single through thickness solid element. This isn't always going to be uh, accurate enough because a single element, a single solid element through the thickness undergoing bending, isn't going to capture the, the structural response correctly. We could also do production ply wise, where the the groups of of plies are going to be extruded as a single model, a single element. So we have four uh, production groups through the thickness. This one's obviously thicker than the other three. Uh, it will reduce our element count a lot, whilst also uh, providing us a full through thickness uh, capacity to, to model the bending response. We can also specify the thickness of the extrusion, so our our composite layout will be divided based on our, our thickness specification and then we'll extrude accordingly. So this is a little bit of a confusing slide but it's how to transfer your information from uh, ANSYS composite preprocessor into a analysis system. So we're starting at the top left here. We've dragged in a, a static structural. We haven't connected them up yet. I'm going to drag and drop my ACP setup onto the model cell and it's going to ask me whether I want to transfer solid data or shell data depending on whether I've set up that solid model or not um, I'll, be, uh, I'll be transferring either my shell or solid data and then it will obviously pass through that information into my analysis system and then I can go through and do that analysis. So that information that it's passing through is under the imported plies in my model tree and if you expand that, you can actually see each of the individual plies that you specified. Things like orientations can be visualized and, and fabric shapes as well. 
So in this case, I've selected one of my pliers here on, on a composite wheel, and it's showing me this, this little fabric reinforcement area that is specified by this ply. Applying loads and boundary conditions to a composite model is, is really no different to any other mechanical model. All of the boundary conditions that are available in, in mechanical are compatible with the composites. Um, so that's just being intelligent about how you're setting up your problem. It's going to be no different as if we were simulating aluminium or steel. So there's not going to be any issues there. Once we have run our analysis and we want to post-process some of the results, we can visualize results as a maximum for every single ply of our structure. So obviously with different orientations through the thickness, different plies can be carrying different, uh, different proportions of the loading. But if we just want to get an overall trend, we can visualize the maximum result across all of the plies. And the way we do this is in the details window of whatever result we're trying to visualize, we can scope our result by layer and we do our entire section. Alternatively, we can scope it to a specific ply if we want to really dive into the, the load distribution of each part of the structure. So in this case, I'm doing scope by ply and then I just need to select whichever ply I want to visualize from the model tree and then it will show me the results on that specific ply. Some of the really composite specific tools uh, that are available for post-processing is the failure tool in, in particular. So ANSYS includes a number of, of kind of industry standard failure criteria. These are, are mathematical models which are going to specify, uh, which are going to measure whether our, our, com our composite structure is experiencing failure or not. So if we want a safe design, we need to look at these models to say if we have any structural reserve built into our, our, our structure. So we can import, insert our composite failure tool. I'm looking at inverse reserve factor at, at this point. So an inverse reserve factor of one means, uh, of above one means that I, I'm experiencing failure. Below that, my structure is safe. And I can choose which criteria I want to analyze my structure against, whether that's just a, a simple maximum stress or strain limit, or some of the more advanced models, the Hashin, Hoffman, Sai Wu models, these take into account things like uh, matrix shearing, or in, su in some circumstances also delamination predictions. Um, we, so there are 13 different failure criteria you can choose from, or you can turn them all on and then just visualize the most critical result from any of those failure criteria. So if you want to be as, as conservative and safe as possible, you can analyze it across all these different criteria. This will show you any hot spots on your structure where you might be experiencing failure. In this case, I have an inverse reserve factor of 1.13, so I'm just beyond the safe region, so I am experiencing some type of damage in my structure. I can then zoom in on that location and I can visualize with these little uh, annotations which criteria is predicting the failure, which failure mode is it, and, which pl and also which ply is that failure going to occur. So in the documentation we have kind of a, a little legend of what these, what these uh, notations mean. But in this circumstance, the PUC failure criteria uh, is, is predicting a, a tensile failure. In this area, it's also uh, matrix compression in this area. So this model can break up the structural response into all the different type of failure modes and actually capture which type of, of, of damage we're going to be seeing in that area. In the circumstance that we want to look at delamination, we do need to activate that, that part of the analysis. So in model, we just need to insert a fracture system. And at that point, we can choose whether we're looking at interface delamination, contact debonding, and also the way in which we're, we're capturing that delamination kind of energy, whether we're using the cohesive zone model 
or the virtual crack closure model. So this is where we would be applying material properties like uh, separation energies or, or fracture toughness and then we're going to be able to apply that to contacts or interfaces within our structure. I'll quickly go through and show you a demo of, the, of uh, looking at our, com our composite chassis. We'll transfer the data over into a, a mechanical analysis, set up our model and do some of the post-processing uh, for strength and also safety.